Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, it's me, Cowboy Jack. And today it's such a beautiful sunny day outside, I thought we could do maybe just a little bit of fishing. Does that sound like fun? Normally I would never give away my secret spots, my fishing spots, so I'm not gonna tell you how to get here, but I will tell you we're here at Lake Holcomb in Spring, Texas. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fishing gear. We've got a lot of stuff to look at today. So I've got my tackle box. This has all my goodies in it, all the kind of lures that we're gonna use today. I've got my spinning reel that I will talk a little bit more about. And then of course my favorite, my open faced bait casting reel. I'm just gonna grab my tackle bag, put this here. Let me go lock up my truck real quick. Hey Cowboy Jack, how's it going? <laughs> all right. Well, now that we're all locked up and good to go, let's go see if we can catch some fish. That'll be really fun. You know, there's a lot of different types of fish here in this lake, and we've learned about fishing before, but it's always fun to get a refresher, right? So this lake is actually freshwater. That means that there's catfish, there's largemouth bass, and of course, there's perch. Wow. There's a whole lot to see just even on the trail down to the water, right? I mean, we've got all these really cool trees around us, the dirt on the ground. It looks like it just rained, and actually it did rain. So it's a little bit muddy, but it's gonna be a whole lot of fun once we get down to the water. Whoa, you guys see that? This is really fun to do when you're outside. You can look at the paw prints on the ground and try to guess, guess what kind of animal it is. I know that's a dog track. I've got a lot of dogs, so I recognize those all the time. But out here in Spring, Texas, we've got all kinds of different wildlife. So when you're walking along and you're looking down, trying to look for prints, you might find the prints of things like raccoons, a possum, <laughs> lots of squirrels, of course, but there's deer, hogs, all kinds of things. Maybe even some bobcats hiding out in these woods. Guys, I can see the water right up here. Wow. I think it gets prettier each and every time I come out here. Look at that. Of course we're here to go fishing and that's gonna be a whole lot of fun, but it's fun to just take in all the views. I mean, look right over there. We've got some blackbirds flying away. There was a big white crane on the water. Oh, you can see him across the lake right over there. Might look a little bit small, but we might be able to get closer to him. Let's go down here on the dock and take a look at our fishing gear. Whoa, guys, come here. Hey, there's a little surprise down on the dock. You guys want to check it out? Now, thing to remember is even though that's just a regular duck, some of them are real nice and friendly and some of them aren't. So we're going to tread with caution and make sure we don't scare them. I'm going to go ahead and let them know we're here. Howdy, Mr. Duck. We quacking around today? I'm going to do a little bit of fishing. Is that okay? I don't want to bug you. All right, I tell you what, you take this side over here, I'm gonna to stick to this side. Does that sound good? See? <laughs> wow, now it's pretty windy out here today. Can you guys hear that wind whistling? And there's also something in the air up there. Hear an airplane up there. Oh, you can see it right over there. I bet you guys can't see him, but he's flying really fast. So anyways, today's a little bit windy, so I probably won't use this, but it's already tied on right now. So this is my bait casting rod. So they call it bait casting because it's actually open faced here. Now, moms and dads, don't look at me too close here because this line needs to be replaced. I haven't had time to do it. But anyway, I'm gonna use my top water scum frog and just cast it out on this open face reel and see, open face reels are a little bit confusing for uh, when we're just starting out, so this isn't really a good example for you, but you have to use your thumb to figure out how to cast. And so there's this button here that releases the brake. Watch what happens when I release the brake if you watch my frog out there. Push the button, 
see he's gonna fall down so there's no nothing stopping him no break and so whenever I'm ready to reel in I just grab the handle and reel like this so whenever you're casting it, it can be tricky sometimes and there's something called a backlash those aren't real fun to get and I'm sure I'll get one because it's pretty windy and I'm not very good at it but this is my favorite reel to use and look oh man I wonder if mr. duck will let us squeeze by so on a day like today when the wind is pushing all of this water up in here it's probably moving all the little bitty fish up into this muck and kind of this grassy area up against the bank so I'm gonna try to get my scum frog right up there against the grass I did a pretty good job for my first try and see you can see it on the top of the water I'm just kind of scooting him along and seeing if anything will bite him see how that frog swims across the water what we're trying to do is make the fish in there which are catfish bass and perch uh, think that this is a real frog jumping along the water and make them get hungry for a little bit of lunch I'm gonna see if I can throw it a little bit further this time there we go now we're covering some ground and it looks like my frog got a little bit full of water he's a little bit old that's what happens when you leave them in the garage too long and you don't fish with them constantly I know I don't get out and fish as much as I'd like to but boy this is relaxing and see what I'm doing here come here look at this I'm pulling it like this but I'm also reeling in at the same time keep everything moving along real nice and fun Wow well let's tie something else on and see if we can get a bite I'm gonna go ahead and see this rod has a little hook keeper right there make sure it's nice and safe I put the hook right through there and then I'll reel it up tight now my other rod is a spinning reel these are really fun and they're a lot easier to use so what these do whoops got a little tangled that happens when you're fishing whoops see this has a bail on it that's this thing right here that you flick open and then you hold the line with your finger until you're ready to cast but all I've got on there right now is this little bitty hook I was out catching some perch with Cowboy Caden the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and change this lure. Let's see what I've got in my tackle box. Whoop. Some people use hard plastic tackle boxes. I like these soft boxes myself. But here's what I was looking for. Perfect. Now, right here. See this little guy? Can you hear that? That's called a rattle trap. So I'm gonna tie this on, but first I gotta cut this off. Now, when you cut things and things like that, you always need to have an adult because we have to use big tools when we're fishing, kind of like this pocket knife I've got here. So I'm an adult, so I get to use it. I'm gonna open it up, cut that hook off, and put it safely in my tackle box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this on there. I'm going to stick this through, and some people like to use a swivel, and that's probably the correct way to do it, but I don't have a swivel on me today. So I made a loop. I'm gonna twist this around six, seven, eight times. And you get a lot better with this as you do it, right? You guys don't have to learn how to do this just yet. It's more of a grown up thing to do right now, but I loop, swoop, and pull, kind of like tying your shoes. And now that I've got that done, it looks like a big tangly mess, but watch what happens when you pull on it. I'm just gonna slide it down there and boom we've got a nice tight knot so I have this extra string there and that's not good because the fish would see that and be like hey there's there's a string on this I don't want to eat that so I'm actually gonna use my knife and cut that part off and like I said the knife parts are for adults sometimes you use scissors I like a pocket knife but I've been doing it for a long time I know how to do it very safely so now that I locked that up, I'm going to put it back in my pocket so we don't get hurt. And I have my rattle trap on. So guys, come look at this real close. It's cool how it moves through the water. See, if you can see it under the water, it shakes around and it makes that rattling sound. And fish hear that and think there's a bait fish and they get hungry. So again, I'm going to borrow a little bit of space from our friend, Mr. Duck. Hey, Mr. Duck, what is your real name? 
He said his name is Quackers. Well, hey, nice to meet you, Quackers. I'm not gonna bug you. I'm just gonna fish right here, okay? Guys, come over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this, watch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the bale and I'm holding the line with this finger. And now I'm going to cast it out. And now you just flip it back and reel it in and work it kind of the same way we were working those other lures. Some people just crank them in straight, just like how they are intended to be used. I like to tug on them a little bit. And that way, when it's moving through the water, it gets to sink a little bit and the fish get a chance to catch up to it. Let's do a couple more casts and then we might need to go find another spot. No bites. You think these guys, these fish are taking a break? Wait a second. They're at lunch break. Wow. All right. Well, let me just put this back up and see this rod has it too. That little hook set loop right there. Take that little bitty hook and put it on there. Reel it up tight. Boy, I just love fishing. It's so relaxing. All right, guys. Well, one of the things about fishing is I like to try to find a spot that's not quite as windy. And that dock over there had so much wind. Since this spot's a little bit down, I thought we might give it a shot. Let's just come down the bank. And the thing to remember about fishing, you want to get close to the water, but not in the water, right? You got to be real careful that you don't get too close. So I'm going to come down here. Look, there's even a nice flat spot right here. I'm going to set this down and I'm going to use this rod a little bit. Make a few casts and see if you, we catch anything. That's the thing about fishing, right? They call it fishing, not catching, because you're not guaranteed to catch something every time, but you try your best. And with practice and time, you always get better at things. So after a while, you might become a great fisherman. There was a time when Cowboy Jack used to consider himself a great fisherman. I even had a state record at one point. We won't talk about that. But uh, we, uh, you know, we're just gonna do our best and see what happens. That's how you do everything in life. Try and try and try again. So one cast out here, let's see what we got. Boy, this wind feels good, but it's messing up my fishing. That's all right, we can't control the wind. We can control our attitude though, right? And I'm happy that I'm not stuck at home right now. I'm outside enjoying the good weather, getting a little bit of sunshine, feeling that fresh breeze on my head. You know, I don't feel that fresh breeze on my hair. Wait a second, are you guys laughing at my hair? Stop it! I'll put my hat back on. Mm-mm-mm. I do love fishing. You know, and sometimes we don't always use artificials like Cowboy Jack is using right now. Sometimes we use what's called live bait. That could be worms or minnows, anything like that. I didn't have any of that today, so we're just using these artificial lures. I feel like that's a little bit more fun, but it's also a little bit more advanced. If we're just starting out fishing, you might want to start with just a bobber and a hook and some live bait. That's how I do it with Cowboy Caden because you just leave, throw the bobber out there and when it goes down, that means you have a fish on. This is a little bit more skilled, a little, takes a little bit more time to get used to. But like I said, we're always trying to learn new things, right? So I'm just gonna come right over here, cast out and see if we get a bite. Whoop. What? <laughs> oh. See, <laughs> I didn't catch a fish, but I did catch some grass out of the ground. See, sometimes we get things caught up on us and these little bitty hooks are, can be dangerous. You know, we need them to, so we can catch the fish, but they also snag other things in the water. I'm gonna do my best to get all this green gunk off of there. There we go. And see, I've got a little bit hanging down here. Whoop. And now we're all cleaned up and good to go. I might need to change my lure, see if they'd like something a little bit different. All right, well, let's see what else we've got in the old tackle bag. Whoops. I'm just gonna set that down so I can see what we've got. It's still good, just a little bit old. Now, 
I'm gonna use this guy right here. Oops. See, like I said, sometimes we use live bait and sometimes we use artificial. This is an artificial, but it looks and moves just like a real fish. And this is actually designed to look like a baby grass carp. There's a whole lot of baby grass carps out here. They use them to try to keep control of the hydrilla in a pond, which is actually an invasive species that's not good for us. So those grass carp are really good at eating that hydrilla, so they put those baby grass carp in here to try and eat some of that bad stuff out of here. But we're gonna use that to our advantage because I know big old bass really like to eat baby grass carp because they taste just like minnows. So I'm gonna do my knot real quick. And again, this part should probably be done by an adult. So I'm gonna just do it real quick. Knots are another thing that you get better at with time. So you always wanna practice your knots because what would be worse than having your line break. It'd be hooking onto a big old fish and fighting him, and then your knot came untied. I've had that happen a whole lot of times. It's a lesson learned the hard way. You don't wanna do it. So again, knives are for adults. I'm gonna put it back in my pocket to be safe, and now I'm good to go. This little guy's gonna swim through the water and hopefully get us a bite or two. Man, he's not working exactly like I wanted. He's kind of doing a whirly gig. That's what I call it when they start swimming. So what you have to do is just try to get it back on there just right. Let's see here. See, because this is just, these just come in a bag, a big pack of them. And they're like just little soft plastic wigglers. And we put them on this hook with a little guard on it to keep the weeds off. All right, let's see if that works a little bit better. Looks like it's lined up better. You want to try to keep it in a straight line like that. Boy, this wind is just a howling, isn't it? That's Texas weather for you. Well, I don't think this spot's a really great spot either. But you know what I did see right behind us? Guys, take a look at the ground right behind you there. There's a whole bunch of rocks. You guys like rocks? I really love rocks. There's a lot of fun things we can do with them. I'm just gonna pick up some of these big ones and I'm gonna show you a thing or two about rocks. Ooh, muddy. All right. Well, now that I've got a few rocks here, some of them are muddy, some of them aren't. Have you guys ever skipped rocks before? What you wanna do is try to find a really flat rock. See, this one's kinda round. It wouldn't be very good for skipping. It would just be fun for throwing. You can watch the splash. This one's also pretty round, and I think it'll make a good splash. But see, this one right here is real flat. You can see it's kinda, like it's big, but it's flat it's flattened out not a lot of big roundness to it so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna you hold it in your hand kind of like this and you fling it and it skips across the water I haven't done it in a while so this might not work the first time out but I'm gonna try look at that see how it made several different splashes that was only a two skipper that's not great but I'll keep trying I've got this other really flat rock you guys ready <laughs> I never claim to be the best rock skipper, but I like to have fun and try. Let me see if I can find a really good flat rock. Here we go. Look at this rock. It's nice and flat. That's actually a piece of quartz. You can see because it's got a little bit of shininess to it. But let's see how it skips. I think it'll skip really good. Hopefully this one, I'm gonna try for three skips. One, two, three. I saw three skips. Did you guys see three? That was two. 
That was just two. Let me see if I can find one more skipping rock. All right, well, looks like these, this isn't the best place to find great skipping rocks, but I did find rocks to skip nonetheless. Let's just give it another try. Remember, what you do is you hold it out in your hand like this, kind of like a disc, and you just fling it. That one wasn't good for skipping. <laughs> Sometimes it's the skipper and sometimes it's the tool. Ooh, that one got a lot of skips. Maybe that's what I need to do, go out further. Well, hey, Cowboy Jack isn't as good of a rock skipper as I thought I was, but that doesn't surprise me. I haven't done it in a long time. I bet if I came out here and practiced every single day, I could probably get really good at it. Okay, so the fish aren't biting, the rocks aren't skipping too good, that's my fault. But some of the fun things we can do outside is just get it, get creative with what's around you. So I found two leaves. See these? These are just regular old leaves I found on the ground. What do you think we could do with these two leaves? I'll tell you what I like to do when I was a little boy is I would make boats out of them. See, this could be like the hull of the ship and this could be the sail. I'm just gonna poke it through there, little bitty hole and pull on it just a little bit, not enough to break it all the way. And see, whoop. Now let me try a little bit further. If you pull it through just right, you have a sail up top and a rudder down below to keep it going straight. Man, it's really windy, so I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but we're gonna try. Let me see if I can find a spot to put my boat out in the water. Sometimes there's not a good way to reach out there, so I'm just gonna have to fling it and hope for the best. You guys think my boat will go far? I hope it lands right side up. Well, it flew right onto that grass. <laughs> Let's try another one. Let me find another couple of leaves. See, it's fun to just look around and see what you can find. Ooh, here's a good leaf. Another good leaf. All right. So here's my hole, here's my sail. A little break in the wind right now, so maybe I can get it out there. Like I said, not too close to the water. Look at it, there it is, sailing along. And see, we just took two leaves that we found and made that right now. That's a really fun thing to do, and you can do that anywhere. Looks like that boat landed ashore right on the island of green muck. <laughs> well, that was a whole lot of fun. I think I wanna try to build one more boat. I could literally do this all day. I used to when I was little. See, I found another good hull and now I found my sail. Here's another boat. The wind's picking up a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get him out past that green island I found. Ready? Look at him sailing all the way out there, wow. Rough seas out on Lake Holcomb today for the little bitty boat. See, isn't that cool? And now we can wonder, I wonder who's on that boat. Is that a pirate ship? Uh-oh, hope it wasn't a pirate ship because he just capsized. <laughs> well, the fish aren't biting, but I'm not done exploring just yet. I still like looking around. Look what I found over here. Guys, come here. Let me pull one off so you can see it up close. See that? These are beautiful yellow flowers that are native to Texas. They smell so sweet when they bloom right in the springtime. These are really pretty flowers that grow on these vines and they like take over a tree. Look at that up there. I mean, this tree is absolutely covered up with those vines. That's really cool. I mean, it's pretty and it's not great for the tree, but we love those pretty flowers, right? There's so much to look at and explore all over the place around here. Wow. Just if you look in the grass, you might find some really cool bugs. I mean, it's so much fun being outside, this fresh air. Ooh. You know, wintertime, you get a little bit stir crazy because you get stuck inside for a long time. But eventually, it starts to be a little bit warmer and a little bit breezy like it is today. But you get to come outside and enjoy the views. I mean, look how big this lake is out there. Wow. Wouldn't you know it, I stopped fishing and all of a sudden I see a big old fish jump right down there. Of course that happens. <laughs> hey guys, I was up there exploring around. Look at what I found. This is really cool. This is a feather. 
I don't know if this is from a duck or like a hawk or an eagle, maybe an owl. You know, there's a lot of rules about having feathers in your possession actually. That's why whenever you see a cowboy with a feather in his hat, more often than not that's going to be a turkey feather because it's actually illegal in Texas to have the feather of like an eagle or a hawk. So I just found this on the ground and since it's nat, if it was trash, I would throw it away in the trash can. But since it came from nature, I'm going to put it back down around here because I don't actually know what kind of bird it's from. But boy, that's really cool. I mean, back in the old West days, Indians used to take these and use them for their uh, arrows and so many different uses for these. They even used to fill these with ink and use them as a pen. Could you imagine sitting at your desk at school and going, That'd be weird, right? We've come a long way, ballpoint pens, pencils, all those things. But back in the day, this was one of the big tools for writing stuff down. Anyways, I just wanted to show you all that feather real quick. Well, cowboys and cowgirls, I didn't have much luck fishing today, but I feel like when I go fishing with Cowboy Carter, you guys remember my buddy Cowboy Carter up in Athens, Texas? Really soon we're gonna get to go up there and go fishing with him. I'm really excited about it because I think that cowboy knows a thing or two about catching a fish and I'm not so lucky. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm so glad we got to get out here and feel these fresh breezes and cool down a little bit. Hey, are you guys laughing at my hair again? Okay, I'll put my hat back on. Whew. But you're right, my hair does look funny today, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, real quick, I just want to say hi to some of my real good friends. My buddy Cowboy Lucas and Cowgirl Kenzie from Conroe, Texas, and my buddies uh, Cowgirl Hannah and Cowboy Noah from Montgomery, Texas. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Well, that about wraps it up for me today. I found this really cool shaded pavilion. I'm gonna stop and have a drink of water because it's always real important to stay hydrated, right? But I hope you had a good time with me today. I know we didn't catch any fish. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna catch some fish real soon. But we were trying to catch largemouth bass, catfish, and perch. We didn't manage to catch any of those today, but we still had a good time. I hope you had a good time learning how to build those little boats out of those leaves. That's something that I used to really love to do a long, long time ago because Cowboy Jack is no spring chicken, right? <laughs> but uh, I hope you can try that on your own and learn how to do it. Make sure to always stay safe around the water. You don't want to get too close because you wouldn't want to fall in. That would be really bad. And remember, tying knots and using hooks and all these things we use for fishing can be a little bit dangerous. So always make sure you're with an adult and they can help you tie the knots, bait the hooks, put on the lures, all that good stuff. Anyways, make sure to click subscribe to Cowboy Jack and that way you can come with us on all of our adventures because we try to go on a lot of fun adventures just like us fishing here today. Or maybe even someday soon we'll drive something big like a tractor or a bulldozer. I don't know, hint, hint. Anyways, thank you guys for coming along with me. I hope to see you again real soon. But until next time, yeah!